Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar on uh, a DAS system that is Advanced Driver Assistance System. So here we'll be covering the various topics on uh, EDAS vehicle architecture, the EDAS technologies, the cameras that are used in the EDAS, the cameras that are used, the LiDAR systems, radar systems, GNSS, global networking systems, V2X or V2V and V2X systems, and finally the sensor fusion. So you can say, what is a EDAS technology? Actually, an advanced driver assistance system is a, you can say, uh, the advanced driver assistance technology works on various sensors that are installed in your vehicle, like the camera sensors, the radar sensors, the V2X, V2X means vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to various vehicles, connections, the LiDAR technologies and the GNSS, global networking systems. So all of these sensors, the data from these sensors are processed by a central processing unit, either installed in your inboard vehicle or it is processed in the cloud. If uh, you can say on the advance of uh, 5G technology, mostly the processing will be done by the cloud because 5G and uh, Wi-Fi 6, they are very fast in communications. That means we can communicate with very advanced servers with a very high bandwidth, very fast. When obviously the bandwidth is very fast means the data transmission is also very fast because we need split second processing. Because when your vehicle will be driving at a speed of some 100 or 120 kilometer per hour, then we need very split second actions of our informations and there generally the central processing unit or the cloud units are utilized so how these technologies or how these technologies are you can say structured what is the architecture that governs this technology let us study about those things so what are the positions where all these sensors are installed your lidar is installed at the top of the vehicle because your lidar creates a 3d view of your system okay the lidar creates a 3d view of the surrounding actually the lidar creates the 3d view of the surrounding that means a better perception of the surrounding can be made from a lidar lidar view cameras are there for your object detection and depth perception gnss antennas are there for globally finding your location radars are there for same object detection and you can say uh, movement sensing, ultrasonic sensors are also there, odometer and a central computer, central processing unit that helps us to analyze the information and predict the required actions for the given information. Then comes the five level of automation. Where do ADAS fit? That means in which level of automation we can use ADAS or what is ADAS? And if ADAS is installed in a vehicle, the level of which level of automation the vehicle reach? So let us study. So when no automation, level zero, driver is in control. That means there is no autonomy in the vehicle. There is no parking assistance. There is no, uh, you can say temperature or ambience control in the vehicle. There is no autonomous thing. Everything is manually controlled by the driver itself. Then in the level one autonomy, there is a driver assistance. Driver assistance means you have your rear, rear view cameras are there. And your uh, again, radar sensors are there installed at the rear of the vehicle that will help you to park properly. And that uses accelerometer, steering wheel angle, ultrasonic sensors and all some of some, not all these things, some of these things. Then comes the partial automation. The driver monitors the systems all the time. That means again, the driver is in control, but some level of control can be taken from the driver. Here comes the cruise control thing. Cruise control means when you drive, when you want to drive, let's say the 
highway is completely open and you want to drive your vehicle at a certain speed so what you do you just reach that speed either the speed can be 80 or 100 km per hour you reach that speed then you switch on the cruise control the vehicle will try to maintain that speed until and unless you hit the brake or you switch off the cruise control okay so that is cruise control mode in cruise control mode some amount of autonomy is given to the vehicle that means some amount of control is taken from the driver and that control is the speed control the driver monitors the system remember the driver sees the road use the steering wheel and hits the brake but there is no use of any clutch it is automatically controlled level 3 automation your teslas and higher version of Teslas, they are in between level 3 and level 4 autonomy. They are fully level 3 autonomy. They are near to level 4 autonomy. So level 3 autonomy, driver needed to be able to resume the control. That means most of the control will be given to the vehicle. The vehicle will be driving, the vehicle will be braking, the vehicle will be changing the lane, the vehicle will be changing the lane means it will be steering also and it will be accelerating. So level 3 autonomy needs a lot other type of sensors like system networking, sensor fusion, distance measurement, traffic sign recognition, lane reconstruction, free path definition, precise positioning, real time mapping, driving rules implementation and critical arbitrations. So these are various types of sensors and processing of the information are needed in order to achieve a level 3 autonomy. Then we reach level 4 autonomy. Level 4 autonomy, the driver is not required for specific uses. That means in level 3 autonomy, you will be sitting in the driver position. The steering wheel will be there, but you won't be touching the steering wheel. And for most of the maneuver, the vehicle can perform or vehicle can perform most of the maneuver. In level 4 automation, level 4 automation are generally for uh, you can say, again, a steering wheel will be there. The steering wheel will be there. But for specific uses like Uber, Ola, when they are driving within an urban city, urban city, completely planned city, or even if it is not planned, the paths are planned. Planned means the paths are recognized and the path planning can be done properly. In those areas, the driver is not required at all. At your home, if you call a Uber or a Ola vehicle that is level for autonomy, that has level for autonomy, the vehicle will reach your home. You will sit inside the vehicle. The vehicle will, you can say, take you to a certain place. But the you can say the vehicle won't be able to drive outside of the city, urban city, where there is no networking, where there is nothing. That means where the communication with other vehicles are not available. Level 5 autonomy is driver is not required at all. You, the vehicle can drive in any terrain. The vehicle can drive in urban areas and also not in rural areas, urban areas, urban areas and outside of the cities. I will not say rural areas. I will say less, 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 I can say less populated areas. Okay. Because modernization has reached on all levels. There is no rural anything. We cannot say anything rural now. Everything can be actually urban when, it's, when we say when we say a small city that is that has high defined or high definition plannings. And uh, another city that has low definition planning, but both of them are mod. So in those areas, the level five, or you can say level five automation means there is no requirement of driver. You can drive this vehicle in any terrain without the help of or without your as without the driver's assistance and for this a lot of or you can say information processing power is required first is a lot of sensors are required and a lot of information processing power is also required then the sensor fusion so all the sensors that are installed in the camera or sorry all the sensors that are installed in the vehicle what are the purpose of all those sensors? Why do we have, we have various types of sensors? So first is object detection. Object detection means 
the vehicle will detect what type of object what is the age what is the volume what is the surface area it may not be able to know the volume yes it can know the volume through lidar technology we can know the volume but mostly through radar technology we cannot know the volume okay to know the volume to know the surface area to know the volume to know the surface area we can use object detection object detection can be done very well by a radar and a lidar it cannot be done very well by a camera because the camera will fail to find out the proper age of a object if you have a object like say like say you have a irregular object like this so the cameras are not that precise finding out exactly where the object is ending and another object is starting they are less precise they can find out they can figure out all those things but they are less precise in finding out the object using a camera but through radar we can very precisely find out the object lidar is also very useful ultrasonic can also be useful and sensor fusion if you have a sensor fusion architecture in your vehicle sensor fusion architecture means a certain object is we can say the information of the object is not only taken from a single sensor rather the information of the object is taken from multiple sensors that is the sensor fusion the sensor fusion is a latest technology the technology uh, was uh, you can say the, the idea of that technology is very old the idea of the technology comes when initially the uh, you can say modern uh, initially autonomous vehicles were being developed but for now since we are able to process a lot of data we can able to process a lot of data because of our increasing power of the processing processors and communication speeds as well as high bandwidth uh, communication speeds and cloud servers then object classification what is object classification object classification means detecting a object means the vehicle knows there is something in front of me but what is that it doesn't know the vehicle only knows yes there is something in front of me and i have to avoid this collision now object classification object classification means it can classify what type of object is there you can see when you are driving on the road in india if you see a dog then you become very cautious because the dog can have random accents and he can or he has uh, you can say it, uh, he can uh, you can say come in front of the vehicle but if you see a cow the cow won't be moving from the place so you know that yes i am safe at a if if i am riding at 80 km per hour so i am safe if there is a cow because the cow won't be reacting suddenly but if it is a dog then i should be cautious i should reduce the speed because it can react suddenly so object classification is that it will classify whether the object that it has detected whether it is a living object and non living object if it is a living object what it is is it a dog it is a cat is it a human what it is and depending on that it will perform the required action like if it is detecting kids there are small kids in front of the vehicle at 100 meters so the vehicle speed will automatically reduce okay that means it has detected the object uh, sorry it has classified the object not only it has detected but it can classify the object okay just think that there is no human doing this only the computer is able to classify it and it is very difficult actually to classify object you as a human you think oh it is very for classification you can say human brain or you can say is very very uh, you can say high powered or you can say uh, for classification we need only a small portion of our brain okay for classification actually i will not be talking about those things so it is a bit difficult for a computer to classify object but once the computer or the machine learning is properly done on the systems then classifications becomes very easy so cameras are mostly used for classification because cameras can exactly capture the feature of the object the radar can't be able to capture the feature of the object what are the features features means what is the uh, you can say what is the shape of the ear what is the shape of the eye what is the shape of the leg what is the size of the leg the radar won't be able to detect these things properly on if 
we can also use radar to detect these things. But the amount of time that it will consume for a radar is a bit more. Hence, better is camera. Camera can detect uh, because this camera is just like a, uh, you can say, lens. You, just, just think that you close your eyes and through sound only, you are trying to detect uh, you can say through echo, through echo, you are trying to de detect uh, what type of object it is. So it is a bit difficult. If you close your eyes, it is a bit difficult to object, detect the object or classify the object. Sir, you are on mute. Oh, sorry. So, so uh, I request uh, all of you to mute your cams, so mute your uh, mics. Okay. So if you have any doubt, then uh, you can ask at the end of the session. So, LiDAR, ultrasonic, all these things are used. Then distance estimation. What is the distance? It is very difficult for a camera to measure the distance. Sir, can we go for binocular vision? Yes, we can go for binocular vision. Actually, remember one thing. You also, uh, means, uh, whenever you, uh, as a human, you think that, okay, sir, we can estimate the distance, but just try. Just try one thing. Just use a bucket. Okay, just try to throw something in a bucket. And if the buck, if you are trying, if you are able to throw things, that means now you are, there is enough practice, you can throw things inside the bucket at a specific distance. Just change the distance of the bucket and just reduce the size of the bucket. Again, you won't be able to throw. So you are also not able to perceive the distance properly. Remember, you are also not able to perceive the distance properly, exact distance. It is difficult for human to perceive the distance, though we can perceive the distance. Okay, because, uh, because our brain can do those things, but not precisely. For precise uh, distance perception, we have to practice. With practice, we can precisely, you can say, estimate the distance. But that much amount of time we don't have while we are driving the vehicle. The vehicle uh, so, we don't use cameras. We don't use our eyes. Rather, rather, we use radar to estimate the distance. That is very good in estimating the distance like sonar, so is radar, lidars are also very good and ultrasonic are also good. Sensor fusion is very good. Object is precision. Object is precision means when one object is here. Okay. When one object is there, then another object, if another object is there, then where the first object is ending and the another, and another object is starting, that is is precision. Ace precision can be done very well by cameras. Radars are not that good at finding out ace precision. Lidars are good. Ultrasonic are also good. Lane tracking. Lane tracking again can be done very well by a camera. Because lane tracking, there is no nothing. If you just uh, in a road, if you see lanes, then these lanes are actually paints. So if you use radar or if you use LIDAR or if you use ultrasonic, then we cannot detect this lens properly because it will be returning that yes, it is only a road. There is no lens. But if you use camera, it can find or it can detect the lens very easily. A range of visibility. When there is fog, can you use camera? No, camera cannot be used. In fog, fog weather or bad weather, radars are very useful. Lidars are somewhat useful. Ultrasonic is not useful. Sir, how ultrasonic is not useful? It is because ultrasonic uses high frequency waves. So high frequency waves, when there is fog, rain, tends to dissipate much faster. This is the reason why you can see a red light from a very long distance. But if you see a violet light, the violet light after some distance seems fuzzy. Okay. If you see a violet light, 
if you see any name or any board name board that is written in violet it at a certain distance it looks fuzzy but a red light seems very clear why is that because violet light has higher frequency while red light has low frequency so red light tends to dissipate less as compared to violet light in the same way ultrasonic waves has high frequency so they tends to dissipate so what is the use of high frequency high frequency can detect objects closer that means close objects must much, much faster okay that means if something is changing let's say uh, you are driving the car something is static but suddenly something starts to change or starts to move cameras can detect but ultrasonic sensors can detect them much faster any movement that is occurring in front of the vehicle hello am i audible is my voice audible to all of you yes sir yes sir okay. sure sure yes sir you are audible okay then functionality in bad weather functionality in bad weather means as i have said in fog in snow in rain cameras are useless radars are very good lidars are somewhat good okay because lidars also use light technology ultrasonics are good then in poor lighting condition cameras are not good at all radars that means in a pitch dark environment where you are not able to see or in a pitch dark environment you are lighting up the vehicles uh lights so vehicles light is not enough for a camera to perceive things properly lidar can do it lidar can do it very well because lidar sends its own photons okay to capture the image but cameras they uh, rely on the external photons that means some a light source will be sending a photon it will be hitting the object again that photon will be captured by the camera but in poor lighting radars are very good lidars are also good ultrasonic are also good so this is the reason why we have all these sensors installed for various types of activities for object detection classification distance estimation age precision lane tracking range of visibility then functionality in bad weather then functionality in poor lighting also okay then adas vehicle architecture so what is vehicle architecture ratnamada distributed and central processing so what is distributed and central processing so generally either we can go for distributed processing or we can go for central processing distributed processing means each sensor will be installed with a processor let me just switch off the for some time so that you can see so you can say distributed processing distributed processing means each sensor will have its own processor and it will process the information and it will encrypt the information lidar lidar also as a processor so what is the advantage you can say all these are they will have individual processors sir why what is the advantage of having individual processors actually the advantage of having a individual processor is they can process the information and they can create a information packet okay they can create a information packet so they will scan all the unwanted informations and they will provide only the required information okay they will provide only the required informations this is the reason why you can see your distributed processing is very much required 
Sir, why? What is the information packet? Information packet is just like a zip packet. You know that when you zip any image or you zip any file, its size reduces. Why? Why its size reduces? It is because now this zip file has been converted to a information packet. Again, another zip file will be used to retrieve those informations. Okay. This is the reason why individual processors are important. But again, if we have individual processors, obviously they will be consuming a lot of energy. And sometimes if these processors may have certain amount, certain type of lag. Okay, you can see sense, think, act. Okay, in the same way, sense, think, act means first the sensors will be sensing then they will be processing the information. They will create an information packet and send it to the central or send it to the processing unit. The processing unit will think what action to be performed for this, for this type of information. Then braking, steering, acceleration, all these actions are performed. So this is your distributed processing. In centralized processing, all the information or the raw data is directly uploaded to the central processing server where the processing is done. The information is utilized and the required action is done. So what is V2X? V2X means vehicle to vehicle configuration. X means vehicle to multiple vehicle configuration. So what does it do, sir? What's the function of it? Okay, we'll be discussing. We'll be discussing the V2X functionality. It is just like if your vehicles are connected, then it is easy. Sorry, it is a telematics. Uh -huh. Okay. Sir, V2X is the telematics concept only one, sir. Uh -huh. Yes. So now the information flow. Information flow means, again, let me, I think it should be big or clearly visible. Okay. The information flow means you can see how, where the cameras are installed and where the V2X and LiDAR sensors are installed. So you can see RF front end signals, radio frequency or radar front wave signals, transmitting reflection, receiving down and sending the sending it for signal digitalization. The signals that are received, they are completely analog signals. Then they will be sent for signal digitalization, windowing, range and Doppler FFT. What is windowing? Windowing means the whole, you can say you'll be having a signals like this. So windowing means only using certain parts. Okay. Only using certain parts of the signal. Why this side is not... Okay, so windowing means you can say selecting a specific region of the signal. Okay, and Doppler FFT means FFT means first Fourier transform. So your time, uh, you can say, uh, you can say signal that are based on time will be converted to based on frequency. Frequency. So when we convert the time convert the information from time domain to frequency domain then generally we can get an in-depth analysis that means it is just like you know that how uh, various noise cancelization is done in here i am using you can say a specific a technology called nvidia broadcast that cancels out most of the noise from my microphone okay i'm using a technology called nvidia broadcast that helps to you can say minimize the noise from my microphone. So how it does, there are a lot of noise. You can see vehicle noise is happening in my surrounding and other types of noise are there, but most of them will not be audible to you. Why? Because fast Fourier transform is done. My, you can say voice is converted. Again, windowing is done on the voice. Then fast Fourier transform helps us to find out 
what is the frequency of various objects okay like my voice has a certain frequency so it will only that means it is used to divide various frequencies it is just like uh, when you uh, if you want to there is a music you want to remove the vocals you want to remove the dr drums you want to remove the guy guitars so if you want to remove those no you can say no dot noise those informations then what you do is you do first fourier transform that will find out the frequency in which the guitar is there the frequency in which the drum is there so it will just remove that frequency from your sound wave and then your cleaning is done so that is used for radar radar is nothing but sound yes or no radar is nothing but sound so a lot of informations will be that means bird chirping will be there vehicle moving will be there something there let means the people those are they are talking it will be there each body has a certain amount of vib its own vibration those will also be there so doppler effects and windowing is generally used to clean the signals okay then detection is there tracking then target creating detecting means if certain object is moving then there are sensors that will track the movement of those objects then object classification is done then prioritizing and reporting the object to the network remember all these things are done in split seconds because if your vehicle is moving fast obviously in uh, can say when the vehicle uh, remember when most of the vehicles are autonomous then the vehicle or the traffic speed increases okay the traffic speed will increase now your average traffic speed in most of the uh, you can say crowded areas is some 10 to 20 km per hour that is very low but if you will be reaching a level 4 or a level 4 level 5 autonomy in most of the vehicles your traffic speed will increase to 60 70 km per hour okay and this decisions has to be done in split seconds okay split seconds is also very much okay so these things all these things can be done by high bandwidth bandwidth linking to the central processing then the radar decision unit okay what are the data rate requirements for each sensor data rate requirements you can say should be greater than very very greater than 100 or sorry 1 gbps okay in this one in this one first point the signal should be you can say high bandwidth link should be able to provide the information at a rate of 1 gbps to the central processing unit then the second one 100 mbps is required then three not uh, you can say 1 to 2 mbps is required okay so why why sir there are different speeds because some are there for instant action some of there for predictive action okay instant action means what to perform within 0.1 second what are the actions that need to be performed in 0.1 second those actions need high bandwidth link what are the actions that has to be performed in next 2 seconds those bandwidth or those uh, information needs 100 mbps bandwidth what is the information or what is the action that will be produced it at time t greater than 3 seconds or 2 seconds t it can be anything t can be 5 second 6 second okay what are the action that has to be performed at time t greater than 3 seconds needs 1 to 2 mbps of link speed so any action that requires 0.1 second that means that requires a action within 0.1 second then those informations will be sent at a rate of 1 gigabytes per second then the information or the the action that are required after 2 seconds the information about those actions will be sent at a rate of 100 mbps and the action that are that requires less than or greater sorry, greater than 3 seconds and those will be sent through we want to 2 mbps servers because if all the information are sent to the server obviously all the informations will or you can see if we accumulate all the information it will be very large we have to accumulate the camera information the radar information the signal in we can see the lidar information a lot of informations and if we send all the information in 1 gbps obviously we can send it in 1 gbps but the data size is 10 gbps so we will be requiring sorry the data size is 10 gb 
not 10 GBPS. The data size is 10 GB. So we will be requiring 10 seconds to completely upload this much amount of information. Hence, all, hence you can say through hand high bandwidth link, only a small amount of information is sent that requires split second action. And rest all other sensings or information is sent over a low speed bandwidth, 100 Mbps and another one at 1 Mbps. Then camera. What is the use of camera? It is essential for correctly perceiving the environment. In which type of environment you are riding the vehicle. If you are running or you are riding the vehicle in a school environment or there is school nearby. Okay. And uh, you can say the students or the students are crossing the road. So you should ride the vehicle at a certain speed. There should be a certain amount of alertness in the vehicle. If you are riding the vehicle in an off-road terrain, there should be a certain amount of setting inside the vehicle. So, you know, to correctly perceive the environment, whether it will rain after two to three minutes or whether the, because the environment will change, sometimes it is sunny, sometimes it is cloud covered. So, the environment will change. As the season changes, the environment will change. So, the camera can provide us with the perception of the environment. It is the richest source of raw data about the scene. Only sensor that can reflect the true complexity of the scene. How complex the scene is. If there is a crowded area, how to, you can say, plan the route. If the, you can see if the, there is a, the road is not proper, okay, then how to plan the route. Then the lowest cost sensor as of today. Cameras are very, we can get very high resolution camera at a very low cost. You can see we are buying mobile phones that has 64 megapixel camera. Uh, 64 megapixel is also, a 5 megapixel camera is enough for your autonomous vehicles. 5 megapixel camera is enough for your autonomous vehicles. Okay. You can see we are using those telescope, Hubble telescope and... Uh, you can say your uh, James Webb telescope, their pixel is, they can say they also, uh, their pixels, you can say, are very precise. But still, a single movement in any of the sensors is enough to find out the information about the object at a very large, large distance. So now, our camera sensors are that efficient. A single movement in any one sensor Okay, the cameras will be installed with millions or billions of sensors, slide sensors. And a single movement in any one sensor is enough to detect. So, cameras are very good sensors. If we compare two cameras, okay, if we compare two cameras, then how, on what basis we will compare? I have two autonomous vehicles. They have very good cameras. Okay, then just say me the specification of each camera. According to that only, I will decide which camera or which vehicle has a better camera. That can be done using the resolution of the camera. What is the camera resolution that is installed in both of the vehicles? One vehicle has 64 megapixel, another vehicle has 32 megapixel. Okay, 64 megapixel is good. Field of view. Field of view. What is the field of view? A 64 megapixel camera will have less field of view as compared to a 32 megapixel camera. Okay. Dynamic range. Dynamic range means you can say what is the range of colors, what is the range of motion that the cameras can capture. What is their frequency or their, you can say dynamic range means their uh, refresh rates. Okay. What is the refresh rates? Because it will create an image, it will send it. It will create an image, it will send it. Okay. So, what is the refresh rate of the cameras? That is the dynamic range. Can it be tuned from 60 hertz to 120 hertz or 144 hertz or more than that? Generally, our cameras that are installed in autonomous vehicles, they have very high dynamic range. They can move from 60 hertz to some more than 200 or 300 hertz of refresh rates. 
why 64 64 bit uh, you can say megapixel camera will have less field of view it is because uh, you can say if you want to capture let's say your uh, you want a image size of 3 mb you want an image size of 3 mb so if you are using 64 megapixel with high field of view Okay, with high field of view, then you, your image size will not be 3 MB. If you use 32 megapixel with high field view, then you can have 3 MB. So generally, in order to constrain your size, Then your focus won't be working properly. Okay. Then there is a trade-off between resolution and field of view. Okay. This is the reason why 64 megapixels has they have to have low field of view because a certain image size has to be maintained for processing. Because 64 megapixel, let's say if both of them have same field of view, then the 64 megapixel camera will generate an image size of 10 MB or 15 MB. So if I want 3 MB of image size, then 32 megapixel high field of view or 64 megapixel low field of view. Okay. Both of them are enough. Then stereo camera. Stereo camera for binocular effect. Enables depth estimation from image data. Remember, most of the auto, you can say automobile manufacturers, generally you can say autonomous vehicle manufacturers, they say that a single camera is enough for a vehicle to be fully automated. Okay, though now they are not, uh, they are thinking that oh, no, not only camera, a lot of things are required. But one time there was a hype that a single camera is enough. But now a lot of other sensors, they have found out that it is not actually enough. We have to go for a lot of other sensors. Then now, uh, you can say this is on a single camera. You can say in a single point, all these points gets projected. Okay. All these points gets projected on a single point. So now we cannot perceive any depth if we are using a one camera. If there is one object on the behind, there is another object on the behind, there is another object. Then all the objects will be, you can say all these points, like there is one object in here, another object in here, all these points will be a single point on a single camera. Okay. But in a binocular vision, there is a certain amount of angle between these two cameras. You can also find that out from your own eye. Remember, your both of your eyes don't focus on a given point. They focus or you can say a bit differently. If you, if you are focused on a specific image and just close both of them, and sorry, close one eye and open the other eye and close the, that other eye and open the other. You can just switch the opening and closing of the eye. You can see you are focusing on a single letter, but as you open and close the eye, the letter changes, uh, changes its position. It is because your eye also sees like this. Okay. So this is how adding a second camera can help us to find out the depth. Okay, but sir, can the depth perception be very precise? It can be made precise with practice. You remember, you can also perceive depth very precisely, but you need to practice those things. Okay, inbuilt there is uh, there is a method to do it, but uh, if you don't practice, it becomes less precise. If you practice, it becomes more precise. It is just like your muscle. When you work out, your muscles get very flexible. And you can do a lot of things. But if you don't work out, your mus muscles become sluggy. Okay, they become very uh, fleshy or uh, you cannot perform a lot of things. Then next phase of vision technology. From sensing to comprehensive perception. Perception means from remember, we are using our eye for sensing. 
but our brain is there for perceiving. So the vision technology not only is dedicated to creating better camera, but they are also dedicated to creating better processing units for the information generated by a camera. That is comprehensive perception. Because when we see, we see an object, we just not only sense the object through our eye, we can also perceive what is the object. We can perceive the environment. We can perceive day and night, season, everything. Okay, we have a sense of all those things. Why? Because there is a mind that is doing all these things. So only better camera won't be doing these things. We need to have a better perception. Or we, we need to have a better, I can say, machines that can perceive. Machine learning used already for object sensing. Machine learning again means from camera, you can see there will be a camera and there will be a processing unit. And through training, we can very well help the camera to perceive things. Autonomous driving needs path planning based on holistic use, dynamic following of the drivable area. That means lane following. Dynamic following of the drivable area means lane following. If there is a track, then the vehicle should always the vehicle should always want to be inside the track. So that is dynamic following of the drivable area. So it is knowing that this is drivable, drivable, drivable. Let's say if there is a hairpin turn, a turn like this. Okay, where the vehicle can only see one meter. It is not able to see more than one meter. So how the vehicle will drive? That is dynamic following of the drivable area. Okay, if you have a very sharp corner or a hairpin turn, okay, then we have to follow the drivable area. Deep learning is now applied. Machine learning and deep learning are some of the branches of AI, artificial intelligence that are used to give certain amount of intelligence to the camera system. Okay. You can see this is field of view. Remember, when we are near, we require more field of view. When we are farther, we require less field of view. When we are more, when the objects are more farther, they require more less field of view. Generally, within detecting objects within one meter requires high field of view. Detecting objects more than 10 meters require somewhat squeezed field of view. And detecting images more than 10 or 50 meters requires even less field of view. Now, mobile eye, STN mobile eye. These are, this is a company that produces high quality camera processors. Previously, the QIQ3 camera processor was able to detect detection of driving lens, recognition of traffic signs, detection of pedestrian and cyclists. Remember, camera processor, vision processor, that means there is a camera. Okay, that means there is a camera and there is a processor along with it. Okay, so this is vision processor. This vision processor can take the information of the, from the camera and can detect the lens from that in, image, can recognize the traffic signs from that image, can detect the pedestrians and cyclists from that image, can sense the obstacles, how the human eye sees, can adapt, can adapt to cruising speed, can also used for emergency. <laughs> but the IQ4 technology, the fourth generation vision processor, they can perform a lot more things. Detection of more objects, more precisely, more features. Okay. Monitoring of environmental elements, detailed understanding of the road conditions. Allowing automatic suspension and steering adjustments and highly automated vehicles. That means if we use QI4 with all these features, we can go for very high automatic vehicles. Then LIDAR system. What is the LIDAR system? LIDAR stands for light detecting and ranging or light radar. Sensors send one or more laser beams at high frequency and use the time of the flight principle to measure distance. Time of flight means this is your time of flight. A emitter will send a photon. The photon will reach an object and again the photon will return back and it will be captured by the receiver. Okay, this is your time of flight. How much time the photon? Remember, the photon will travel at light speed. Hence, the information captured by a LiDAR is very fast. 
or information capture yes, captured by a lidar is very fast as a distance is equal to photon travel and speed of light yes, sir when something is traveling at the speed of light length contracts and do occur if anything that is coming into your mind those things are also taken into account okay can be used for object detection as well as mapping and environment detailed 3d scene geometry from lidar point cloud lidar uses the same principle as, as tof sensor but as much as longer distance minimum 75 meter for near field and 150 to 200 meter for far field okay so you can see nanosecond and microsecond distances 2 to 10 meter yeah sorry it means uh, for uh, near field the time is 2 to 10 nanoseconds and for far field the time is 2 to 2 microseconds <laughs> there are multiple technologies currently under evaluation for lidar including rotating assembly rotating assembly rotating mirror flash generally rotating mirrors are now used apart from rotating assembly if you have seen a very good video of a rotating mirror that means how a rotating mirror can helps a help a camera follow an object that means they were playing yo-yo okay uh, uh you can say a uh, sports you can say a student or you can say a pupil uh, uh, or a kid was actually playing a yo-yo and the camera was focused on the yo-yo and it was uh, and its work is to track the motion of the yo-yo so it is it can very easily track the motion of the yo-yo by using rotating cameras so rotating the whole assembly is difficult but rotating the camera is very fast then MEMS micro mirrors optical phased arrays from a transmitter and receiver that is TX and RX perspective the following technologies need to be developed or industrialized for automotive applications remember lidar technology is still under research a lot of research is still needed in the field of lidar okay so if we can say this things has to be improved memes scanning micro mirror technology spad single photon and avalanche single photon avalanche detector then 3d spad 3d single photon advanced detector then smart gan gallium nitride you can see it's a type of sensor that is used to sense photon beams number of beams you can see how the lidars will be compared just like cameras how the cameras are compared by the resolution their field of view and dynamic range in the same way radars can be compared by the number of beams they are sending six beams per second eight beams per second 32 or sorry, not second maybe some in nanoseconds or microseconds points cloud created per speed the per second point clouds created per second or points number of point cloud created per second the faster the more detailed the 3d point cloud can be rotation rate higher rate the faster 3d point clouds are updated updated means let's say that something is moving so when you create a lidar image lidar image that object that is moving should also be seen in real view that means when you see the lidar scanning in your mobile phone or in your tablet lidar scanning images then as the uh, object you can state of the objects are changing if there is a water that is flowing you should also be able to find out that yes the water is flowing it is just like a high fps video recorder okay live video recorder high with 3d information the lidar is a high fps video recorder with 3d information okay guys we'll be ending in some time please have some patience rotation rate then detection range then field of view then upcoming is the solid state radar lidar okay solid state lidar 
So like the summary, autonomous vehicles have been around for quite some time, but now only the technology are available for practical implementation. No single sensor solution exists to cover all aspects, range, accuracy, environmental condition, color discrimination, and latency. Latency means delay in receiving the signal or noise in the signal that cause the delay. Multi-sensor fusion and integration will be must. Multi-sensor means uh, integration means that we have seen in the first the sensor fusion. This is your sensor fusion. This last line is your sensor fusion. Many LiDAR solutions are available for being purposed with no clear winners. Market is still at a very early stage of development and experimentation in LiDAR technology. When and which technology or system will be widely adopted and mass production starts is still unknown because they are at their nascent stage. Then comes the radar system. What is radar? It is radio detection and ranging. It is one necessary sensor for ADAS, Advanced Driver Assistance System, for detection and location of objects in the presence of interference, noise, clutter, and jamming. Okay. That means if there is any interference in the noise, because obviously when you will be sending sound waves, so from southern other areas, there may be certain sound waves. Okay. Uh, you can say some there is a speaker that also generates sound waves. Okay. So this is interference, noise, and clutter. Because your radars will be sending radio waves, but some of the other radio waves may also be tuned in those frequencies or in a certain frequency that can hamper. Though superposition can be uh, easily utilized in a environment like in an air environment, but still interferences are there. Robust object detection and relative speed estimation. Relative speed means if two of the objects are moving, then what is the relative speed between those objects can also be found out very easily. Transmit a radio signal towards a target, receive and reflect signal energy from target. The radio signal can be formed of pulse or continuous waves. Work in poor visibility like fog and precipitation. Automotive radar utilizes linear frequency modulated signal, frequency modulated continuous waves, FM, CW. FM results is a shift between your targets or your, uh, you can say, TX means your, uh, you can say your emitter and RX means your receiver. Signal that follows for a determination of the time delay range and velocity. There are various types. So we can say imaging radar is there, non-imaging radar is there. Imaging radar forms a picture of the object or area from sound waves, non-imaging radar measuring scattering properties of the object or area. It means how the object is scattered in the surrounding. Primary radar transmits signals that reflects and receives. Secondary radar transponders that responds to interrogation with additional information. Pulse so radar, high power signals are only present. Yes, hello. So uh, yes. Please ask your doubts quickly or else we can. So in the, the previous classes. slide. Uh, oh. So in the previous slide, uh, yeah, the speed of propagation in the medium range is equal to. Uh -huh. So when uh, when it is raining, which medium do we take, sir? Uh, yes, actually it is just like uh, we have friction coefficient. Is there any is there any constant friction coefficient for all materials? No. So you can say from observation, these speeds are found out. Okay. And it will be updating like that. Okay. It is just like if it is raining heavily, there will be three things, whether light rain, medium rain or heavy rain. So in light rain, a certain propagation speed will be used. In medium rain, a certain propagation speed will be used. And in heavy rain, a certain propagation speed will be used. Okay. Yes, sir. So it will be used just like your friction coefficient. Okay, we have observed various materials. What is the friction coefficient between various materials? And we have created a standard chart. In the same way, in rain, we have also observed there's also observation. That is what is should be the propagation speed when it is lightly raining, when it is medium raining, when it is raining heavily. What is the propagation speed? So depending on that, there will be a standard chart that the radar will follow. Okay. 
sir how can the automobile detect the uh, the intensity of rain uh -huh. How what? can the automobile detect the intensity of rain? You are telling the for a less intense rain it will be one thing, and the for medium and for heavy it will be different for operations. Right? Uh, yes, there will be a sensor. Uh, uh, you have not seen the automatic uh, wind screens installed in most of the vehicles. Yes. That means when there is there is a light rain, the wind shield will be moving slowly. When there is a, a medium rain, it will be moving a bit fast. When it is heavily raining. It will move much faster. So how it is estimating the rain? Okay, it is using same ultrasonic sensors. Okay, it is estimating because when an ultrasonic sensor or a, a ultrasonic wave will hit a water particle. Okay, when it will hit lot of water particle, it will lose some of its energy and it will return back. So just measuring that energy loss, we can find out how much water particles are there. If there is a lot of water water drops, not particles droplets. Sorry. If there are a lot of water droplets, obviously it is mediumly raining or heavily raining. If there are less water droplets, then it is lightly raining. Okay. So it is done by using ultrasonic sensors. When the ultrasonic sensor will hit the water droplet, it will lose some of its energy. And by losing that energy, it will return back. Okay. It will, and when the sensors capture it, they can know that yes, it has lost its energy because of water droplet. And when a lot of, um, we can say water droplets are there, a lot of uh, ultrasonic waves will be losing their energy. So from that, we can measure whether it is raining heavily or it is medium rain or light rain. Clear? Yes, sir. CW signal is present continuously. Comparison matrix of a radar, range, field of view, position and speed accuracy. Wide field of view, short range, narrow field of view, long range. Short range and long range radars. You can see the radars like this. Light field of view, short range, wide field of sorry. Uh, wide field of view, short range, narrow field of view, long range. As we have seen previously in the lidars or in the images. Wide field of view, short range, narrow field of view, long range. Okay. These are various radars. Okay, this is a 2014 driver assistance with only two, you can say rear parking assistance. And you can say 2016 with rear parking assistance and emergency braking application. Then level three automation with rear parking assistance, front parking assistance and automotive, you can say emergency braking assistance. Then level four automation, highly, uh, you can say 3D detection with some level of automation and braking assistance and full automation okay and what is gnss gnss is global navigation satellite systems and inertial measurement units it is used to directly measure the vehicle state position velocity and time with respect to the world geometry okay it is it is measured with respect to the world where you are locally where you are globally where you are okay so that it can help you to, that means, uh, accommodate to the environment properly. So there are various real-time kinematics, okay, short line best can be done, precise point positioning can be done, differential global positioning systems, satellite based augmentation systems, nine sphere delay correction, a lot of things can be done. If it, you can say, detects the position globally because Sir, why? What is the use of global navigation satellite system? Can't we use local navigation? Can't just we, we know that the vehicle by using our small, small antennas, can't we know where the vehicle is within a city? Yes, we can know. But to update the cloud, sorry, the cloud or the weather information to a vehicle, the satellites should know the position of the vehicle, yes or no? When somewhere, the uh, you can say there will be rain somewhere. Okay, or there will be a chances of rain. So if the satellite is sensing that a storm is uh, moving towards a certain vehicle or towards a certain group of vehicle, this can only be done if we are finding out the global position. And also another thing that is ionosphere sphere delay correction. 
some of the regions have less thickness of ionosphere or varying thickness the ionosphere thickness varies okay the ionosphere thickness and its uh, density varies throughout the throughout the whole uh, geometry of our earth so if it exactly detects the position of the vehicle then it can correct the ionosphere delay okay at that area then angular rotation rate angular acceleration and heading these things can be done clearly by using a global navigation satellite system then gnss and imu positioning more precise enables more safety features sir can you explain ionospheric clearation ionospheric delay correction actually what happens when you are trying to communicate okay when you are trying to communicate generally uh, you can say if you are driving uh, in united states okay united states or, or let's say in india in india uh, your uh, Uh, central processing server is located at madhya pradesh okay central processing server for automated vehicles and you are driving the vehicle in delhi so how will you send or how will you communicate with the central processing unit through your service stations okay through your you can say through service or networking stations so if you can say Uh, and the network networking is done. You can see your satellites; they fly at a height of. You can say they fly above the ionosphere. Remember, all the satellites, all your space stations, space stations, they fly above the ionosphere, because uh, you can say there will be lot of interference in the ionosphere. So what happens when the networking devices? They there is a satellite in here. Okay, so in order to communicate between two networking. stations so they will send their information to the station so the satellite and the satellite will again send it back to the station this is in delhi and this is in madhya pradesh so if the satellite or not this satellite there is another satellite that is used to sense the position of your vehicle the vehicle is here okay your vehicle is here now if it can sense the position of the vehicle correctly it can find out during the information transfer what will be the ionospheric delay okay what will be the ionospheric delay so if your uh, mp the central server is receiving a information at t is equal to 5 second then it will know that yes this information is bit delayed this information is bit delayed and that correction remember that correction can be done by dynamic bandwidth position uh, ranging dynamic bandwidth means your working bandwidth is let's say 100 mbps so at a certain ionosphere at a certain region because of the ionosphere density and thickness your you can say bandwidth reduces to 50 mbps so what the dynamic range bandwidth will be do, will be doing is it will sense that there will be a certain loss in the ionosphere so it will increase the bandwidth it will increase to 150 mbps the transfer speed okay remember we are never at our maximum transfer speed we are at our average transfer speed our average transfer speed is very low as compared to the maximum transfer speed your bandwidth the broadband links that you are getting at your home it has a transfer speed of some 100 some 10 gbps or 5 gbps but you are getting some 5 mbps or 20 or 30 mbps like that okay because that is the average speed that is not the highest speed and you can tune the speed okay so in the same way it has a dynamic range your bandwidth link has a dynamic range from 50 mbps to 200 mbps depending on the position of the ionosphere the bandwidth speeds are corrected okay so that always there will be a set rate of delay between the receiver transmitter and the receiver clear in the ionosphere what happens generally your uh, ionosphere as i have said there are those are ionized okay ionized means obviously what will happen your uh, radio waves radio waves are nothing but what photon packets so you because of the ionosphere the photon packets will get uh, you can say the information is lost because of the ions that are present they will disrupt or they will either absorb the photons or they will change the energy of the photon so for which there will be certain delay in communication 
ओके क्लियर हेलो यस सर व्हिच मींस लाइक वॉट एवर इन्फॉर्मेशन वी रिसीव लेटली सो इट करेक्ट दट इन्फॉर्मेशन वेर वी कैन गेट द इन्फॉर्मेशन वेरी फास्ट यस 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 इट करेक्ट द इन्फॉर्मेशन एक्चुअली इट करेक्ट द डीले ओके इन्फॉर्मेशन करेक्शन इज नॉट दैट when that must done because yeah, that's what, like whatever lost, delay is happening ha uh, ha uh, it corrects the delay okay by increasing or decreasing the bandwidth a dynamic bandwidth range is there information okay. cannot be corrected because if information there is a problem in the information okay then that cannot be corrected okay. but generally Thank that you. doesn't happen okay all right then precise positioning to enable 30 cm precision lane detection positioning data for v2x v2x means vehicle to a larger vehicle connection collision avoidance autonomous parking autonomous driving and e call accident location if there is an accident then if you are connected to the satellite we you can say very easily you can e call to a accident location okay then higher integrity required requirements across safety critical applications i will be skipping this some of these things okay so just uh, i will be saying you these things in brief semi and autonomous driving safety related applications require increase in higher safety levels added redundancy more robustness integrity and security then test your app that is precise positioning using gnss receiver it is a iso this best concept with unique and absolute safe positioning information <laughs> Okay. This is not so, required, sir. Can, you can just. Uh, this is required, but uh, uh, the concepts needs will will need some time for clarification. Okay, so you can just snap, click a image of this so that you can read these things later on. Okay. Or, or you can text me so that I will be explain. I will be providing you with the explained information about these things. Or you can uh, search the inter internet in order to find more informations about these things. Okay. Sir, will I get that recording? like this recording uh, okay uh, at the end of the session uh, the you can say it is okay, or okay. Uh, the coordinator will be saying you about this information okay 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 sure thank you then gns accuracy in automotive environment using ppp point that is precise point positioning you can see how the time and error this is the time and error in the position horizontal you can see that whenever you try to order any food there is a certain error in the location okay that means your mobile will be somewhere and within 5 meters your mobile range will be within 5 meter 5 to 10 meters so that is the error range okay these are the error these are the generally how the error range it is the means uh, in meters 1.5 it starts from 1 meter to highest is 2.5 Or even more than that, it goes to three meters also. This is the horizontal positioning error. Horizontal means your horizontal positioning. Okay. Same GNSS integrity and protection levels. Okay, that means how you can say your error. And yes, remember PIS SWB protection level is the error is very low in the protection level. But if we use only PIS WPE, then You can say we'll be having less protection. Then let us cover V two X. What is V two X? Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt. Sir, uh, there was one thing horizontal and that uh, horizontal CDF. What is that full form? Sir, CDF and protection level difference. You can say CDF means. Okay, you can say your uh, uh, PL CDF. Actually, CDF means it is a term of error. Okay, it is an error term that is used. Let me just say you the full form of CDF just a bit. It is somewhere in here. You can say it is critical. Actually, critical delay factor. Okay, CDL means critical delay factor. And then okay. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Protect PL means protection level, critical delay factor. Okay. Okay, then V two X. What is V two X? It is V two V vehicle to vehicle configuration. Then vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to motorcycle, vehicle to devices and objects. Then vehicle to pedestrian. This is your V two X. 
V2X comes V2V, vehicle to vehicle, then V2I, vehicle to infrastructure, V2M, vehicle to motorcycle, V2D, vehicle to devices, and V2P, vehicle to pedestrian controls. Okay. Various FCC spectrums of allocation of DSCR of ITS. Okay. <coughs> then you can say reversed. So I'll just get a summary of all these things. What is this? Okay, I'm just keeping this one also. Then comes the DSCR. Okay, that, in, that is your DSCR is actually a wireless vehicular environment. Okay, DSCR is a you can say wireless vehicle environment. Just one minute, give one. Okay, your DSCR actually is dedicated short range communication. Okay, so I've forgotten that full form. So DSCR means your dedicated short range communication. Okay. So these are your wireless environments where your vehicles will be in contact with the infrastructure with a broadband speed of 10 times. Broadband speed is generally, you can see you'll be getting a speed of five to eight gigahertz okay okay and uh, you can say ofdm is orthogonal frequency domain modulation okay dsr is dedicated short so you can say short range communication ofdm is orthogonal frequency domain modulation okay so these things are used then CV2X is a V2X radio layer. So you can say again, CV2X is a device to device D2D communication service added to a LTE public safety, okay, for proximity services and etc. Then CV2C, you can say V2X makes use of D2D interface that is device to device with PC5 AKS side link for direct vehicle to everything communication. So what are the communication protocols? These are communication protocols, okay, that you have to remember. CV2X takes the place of dynamic short range communication radio layers in relevant regions. Then V2V, V2I, V2P are used. Okay. Then your CV2X transmission modes stand alone and distributed. And your CV2X generally uses your global, you can say, sensing for location and time for synchronization. Okay. Then transmission, other types of transmission mode, you can see there are two vehicles, vehicle one and vehicle two, how they'll be transmitted. The, you can see they will be taking the information of the traffic. That means if a vehicle is ahead of you, it can provide you the information of the traffic that is ahead of that vehicle. Okay. Out of coverage operation, the transmitting vehicle is not connected to the network. No SIM card or interoperated collaboration is required. Each vehicle performs its own scheduling and allocation. No dependency on inter, inter vehicle components when mandated. Okay. You can say your C2B link is now uses LTE 4GE uplink transmission speed. Okay. Then SC FTMS single carrier frequency division multiple across signal. A single carrier multiple ac across techniques is used. These are various techniques of actually your, these are all your communication protocols. Okay. Remember, these are all the communication protocols. If you just uh, follow what are the communication protocols that are required for your CV2X interface, you'll be getting all these communication protocols. Okay. In summary, all the technologies, both of the technologies will do the job. Industry is waiting for regulatory, certain government mandate is preferred. CVX2 has to reach automotive production maturity. Implementation and deployment will de depend on original equipment system architecture. 
the market will demand stand alone v2x modules for original equipment manufacturers and aftermarket because v2x is safety critical sensor okay then finally we'll go for sensor fusions okay what are the use of sensor fusion sensor fusion is generally imu plus gnss plus lidar and extended Kalman filter. Kalman filter, just remember, Kalman filter is used to remove noise from your sensors. Okay, so thank you. So now if you have any doubt, you can ask. So what are the things that we have covered? Let me just show you all those things again. So what are the sensors used in ADAS technology? Level of automation where do it does fit sensor fusion then vehicle architecture for processing the information from the sensors the sensor information flow then camera sensors then light you can say lidar sensors radar sensors then finally your gnss and imu sensors inner cell measurement units imu means inner cell measurement units then your error levels on GNSS and IMU sensors, then V2X, that is vehicle to various infrastructure sensors. Yes, yes. Now they are providing in some of the vehicles it is there. And you can see various protocols of communication by CVX2 sensors. Okay. 